Greetings, everyone, and thank you for attending our FACT Virtual Academy. Welcome back to the school year. We have a great presentation for you today. Uh, we'll be talking about instructional design. Uh, before we get started, we have a short video from Jenna Monley, our chief uh, in the Family and Community Engagement Office. Hello, school district of Philadelphia, parents and guardians. I hope you and your families are staying safe and feeling well. I am so excited to welcome you to the district's virtual family academy, Learn Where You Live, a theory of virtual workshops to help our families navigate this challenging moment in time. In our new learning at home environment, it is especially important to provide you with the necessary tools and resources to support your students academically, socially, and emotionally. By providing you with direct access to experts from across the school district, we look forward to interacting with you and having meaningful discussions so sit back, enjoy, and let the hashtag learn we live live experience begin. Thank you, Jenna. And my name is Philip Hammond. Um, I'm, uh, regardless of what my um, screen name says, I'm not Tempest Burgess, uh, but I'm Philip Hammond. I'm an assistant director in the Family and Community Engagement Office. Um, and we also have uh, from the Family and Community Engagement Office today is uh, Janelle Fitzpatrick will be joining us as well. Um, before we get started, we'll just go over some webinar norms and what to expect. Um, the chat box, uh, you can use that for question and answers. Janelle will be managing the chat box and she'll communicate the, with the host if you have any questions. Um, audio and video will be muted uh, during this session uh, just to respect the privacy of everyone. Any follow-up questions you have can be sent to ask at philatsd.org. And this is being recorded. Um, so this webinar and all future webinars can be found at www.phillasd.org forward slash face forward slash fact. Again, there's the message about being recorded. And again, today's session is instructional design, understanding the design for digital instruction. This is being presented to you by the Office of Academic Support. Um, our guest uh, presenters today are Dr. Malika Brooks, Latanya Miller, Pat Ryan, Siobhan Savage, and Dr. Nishwana Francis Thompson. Thank you all for joining us. And give me one second and I will get your slide up and we'll get started. Let me go back a page. Give me one second here. There we go. I'm on, Bill. You're up, Dr. Brooks. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. We are going to present the instructional design and understanding the design for our digital instruction, the expectations for teaching and learning during our digital and eventually hybrid school experience. Next slide. So as we thought through what happened in the spring, and our experiences in the summer, including students and teacher experiences, we wanted to go into the planning for the fall, thinking through a few things. First, you will see that our school opening guiding principles and priorities, we began with beliefs. Now take an opportunity to read the beliefs that are listed on the screen. At the core of this, we believe that it takes everyone to have effective implementation of the instructional design. Student engagement and making connections are key and developing partnerships with our families are in, is integral. 
It is important that parents and families understand the experiences of students and teachers as they engage in our technology platform and use of our core materials to ensure that students have access to grade level instruction and have the opportunity to scaffold learning. Our priorities are equity and access for all of our students, application in the real world experiences, and the promotion of social awareness and the incorporation of anti-racism throughout students' learning experiences. Next slide. Again, these are the priorities that we have. We wanna ensure that every student who is, in, is a part of the school district of Philadelphia, one, receives the education and the instruction that they need to scaffold their learning, also have access to grade level instruction. We wanna ensure that we are meeting the needs of our diverse learners. And we want opportunities for students to apply the learned skills and concepts in real life experiences. One of the key feedbacks that we received from, from students was that they participated in tests and assessments and did not have opportunities to apply their learning. So this was very important to us this year. And again, we wanna ensure that we are recognizing our social climate. We wanna recognize students' concerns as they are in school. And we wanna ensure that student voice is aligned to our instructional program. Next slide. Now, the Office of Academic Support entails early childhood education, special education, multilingual program, programming, athletics, post-secondary readiness, teaching and learning, professional development, and curriculum and instruction. So our office is pretty heavy in what the experiences are for teachers and students as it relates to our instructional program. We wanted to ensure through this will that we were providing supports to teachers, leaders, students and families as we plan the instructional design. Next slide. So there are three key initiatives that are aligned to the priority of school opening and the year. One is the school opening. How are we opening schools and how are we ensuring that the experience for teachers, leaders and students and families is different than it was in the spring. We are opening school or have opened school, providing four weeks of lessons prepared for teachers that are aligned to common course grade level expectations. Special education teachers are assessing students and having team meetings, and we have supports for our English language learners. In addition to that, we have the curriculum equity initiative. We are developing curricula that is aligned to common core standards with an alignment to PA core standards in the science of reading, the science of mathematics, and the science of teaching and learning to ensure that we are providing optimal support for our staff and students. Most importantly, we are providing plans or supporting the development of plans for students to transition to high school from middle grade and from high school to their post-secondary opportunity. Next slide. Now, what is the instructional design? There are key elements in the instructional model for 2021 school year. This will guide the work of the academic office. It is also guiding the work at the school level from school leaders and teachers to students and families. There are four things that I wanna reiterate. One, every student should have access to grade level instruction. This is direct instruction from the teacher. Appropriate supports will be provided to ensure that we are meeting the needs of our diverse learners, which includes modifications and accommodation. We're giving students choice. Students should have the opportunity to complete more than one task 
or variation in tasks to demonstrate their learning. Some of this work will happen with the teacher and some without the teacher. We call it synchronous and asynchronous learning. <coughs> Excuse me. Direct grade level instruction is synchronous, which means it happens at a specific time where the teacher is with the student via Google Meet or Zoom. Individual classroom instruction, including grade level work, happens in asynchronous time without the teacher and at synchronous time with the teacher, but in small groups. Lastly, we are connecting learning from last year to this year. There were many concerns from parents and families regarding how are we going to ensure that students are ready for the current grade. So we didn't think about um, from March 16th through the end of the school year, June 12th. We thought about the entire year of learning last year that was supposed to happen. We identified those priority standards in a, from, from last year and aligned them to the priority standards for this year. So when, that, when teachers are teaching, they understand the skills their students should have developed in the previous year to support the work this year. And we have allowed time for that, to, that level of instruction should happen, whether it's in a mini lesson or if it's in small group instruction. The next slide. Thank you. Now, what does that look like? And I believe this is already on the district's website, but the Office of Faith will face, the, off, the face office will make sure that this is available um, with the presentation. We posted and distributed sample pre-K through 12 schedules for instruction, including sample schedules for special education. This is important because it tells you what should happen in the literacy block, the math block, the science instructional time, and et cetera. It does not give you the school schedule, but it tells you what should happen during those instructional content area time. This is important because it outlines what is synchronous, what happens with the teacher, and asynchronous, what happens without the teacher. And yes, there's a full day of instruction. We recognize that students will experience a full day of instruction at home, but we try to ensure that students had their core materials, including textbooks, so that asynchronous instruction will occur and it will decrease the amount of time that students are on the screen. There was a specific kindergarten schedule for the first five days of school to allow kindergarten interviews to occur. And then we have school teams who will communicate the actual school schedule. So what am I saying? If, this, if you're a third grade student, you may have ELA first. If you're a sixth grade student, you may have math first. That happens at the school level. What we provided was what happens when, I, when your child does have ELA, English and language arts, and what happens when your child has math, mathematics, instruction. Okay, so those are the two differences. Next slide, please. Is this still me? Yeah, is that the, you want academic enrichment or the next one after this? Yes, I want academic enrichment. I didn't know if Latanya Miller was. This, this is Latanya Miller's slide. I'm sorry. So for academic enrichment, uh, we have, uh, we want to be aligned with our beliefs that students should still be active in their learning and also have ample opportunities to interact with their peers. And so the Office of Academic Supports um, will develop, support, and also manage the implementation of central office-based mm -hmm. extracurricular activities. And what you see here on the slide is an example of some possibilities of the offerings that may be available for students throughout the course of the school year. For example, we plan to have a School District of Philadelphia oratorical contest, Students um, may have opportunity to participate in Math 24 Challenge. So these types of activities will be available so that students can uh, broaden their horizons and have uh, connections with their peers. Next slide. Okay, that's me. This is Pat Ryan. 
um, the multilingual office created a document to help principals and teachers meet the learning needs of their English learners during virtual learning. Uh, the multilingual managers will help principals and teachers with following through with all of the important areas in the document. So on the slide are just key items that are in the document. Scheduling. Uh, the multilingual managers will help schools with ensuring that all English learners are scheduled to receive daily English language development instruction, especially students who are new to learning English. The multilingual managers will also help schools with prioritizing the instructional needs of English learners who are new to, to learning English. Another important area of focus for our office is helping teachers use the best instructional practices in a whole group setting and a small group setting, especially for English learners who are new to learning English. This document also has quality instructional resources for teachers to use with their English learners during virtual learning. And finally, the document has information about how schools will be told when a new English learner is enrolled at the school. Next slide, please. Slide. Yep. Good afternoon, my name is Siobhan Savage and I am the Deputy Chief for the Office of Specialized Services. The Office of Specialized Services supports our school-based teams and families with special education programming and supports throughout the district. As part of the instructional design for the 2021 school year, the Office of Specialized Services released an addendum in which we detailed how our department would support our schools and families this upcoming school year. For schools, we've provided an instructional framework that details how we should teach and support our students across disability categories. We have and will continue to provide training and support for our school teams and teachers in the new instructional framework for this school year. We must plan to support our community through digital learning in the safest way possible and are planning additional family engagement sessions for our families. We are currently updating the Office of Specialized Services website to provide an easy to use resource for our families, which is linked here on this slide. Next slide. Please. The Office of Specialized Services is requiring school teams to have IEP meetings with families early in the school year to create learning plans for each of our individual students who have IEP services. The learning plans will reflect how the IEP will be implemented during digital learning. And it will be developed in conjunction with families as parents and guardians, as well as students of a certain age are important members of our IEP teams. The IEP teams have already, to be, have already begun to collect data to inform the creation of these learning plans and they will continue to collect data as related to students' IEP goals over the first few weeks of the school year. And we're hoping that all plans are completed by the first week in October, unless there's a special circumstance. We will also have a fact session tomorrow, which will delve more specifically into these digital learning plans. And the session is tomorrow, Wednesday, September 9th, from 2 to 3 p.m. I neglected to introduce myself when I spoke previously. So I'm Latanya Miller. I'm the Executive Director in the Office of Academic Supports. As Dr. Brooks mentioned previously, when we uh, developed the instructional design, we thought very clearly about the priorities and we looked at the entire uh, calendar year to be sure that students are able to be exposed to the priority standards from their previous grade level. 
and teachers are able to support them as they align the grade level work. And so it is important for us to assess students to understand exactly where they are progressing and to develop small groups. So therefore you will see here, part of our priorities is to have assessments for school opening to be able to determine uh, where students are and that screening will take place uh, mid-September through the end of October. Next slide. So depending on the grade level of your child, your child uh, will be assessed in one of our universal screeners, either Ames Web Plus or Renaissance Star. You'll see the grade levels that are listed there. And these uh, assessments are administered online. Next slide. So with everything that we've shared with you today, what does learning look like at home for students? So you will see um, that students should have an established schedule. Dr. Brooks shared with you that uh, we have samples that we shared with schools and then the schools will then develop and send out those schedules to parents. Also, you will notice that students will be engaged with not only their core content classes like literacy, math, science, social studies, but they will also have an opportunity to engage in specialist classes, like for example, physical education or even health. We've talked a bit about synchronous and asynchronous learning. Students will have an opportunity to engage with the teacher, which is that whole group or even small group time, which we call synchronous learning. And they will also have an opportunity to engage in independent work aligned with what they've done in a whole group, which we call asynchronous learning. So students should not be expected to be uh, engaging in on-screen time for the entire school day. There will be time where they will be off the screen to be able to work independently or perhaps in groups. And then finally, there will be scaffolded support based on individual students' needs. Again, looking at those priority standards from the previous school year, and helping students to get them up to grade level. Next slide. Next slide, please. Uh, do you see is that, yeah, do you see the learning at home? Oh, yeah, it's there now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you wanna make sure that you're patient with your child and the teachers. This is new for all of us. And so um, while there may be some bumps in the road, know that we are working diligently to support students. You also want to be sure that you establish an area for your child to work. It's also important for you to be able to communicate and keep those lines of communication open between uh, you and the teacher, especially if you're experiencing any challenges. Also check in just to monitor how your student is engaging with the class and their work. Be sure that they're taking that off screen time. So when a teacher has scheduled time for them to be off the screen, be sure that students actually take that time to give their brains a break. And then also become familiar with the online platforms and tools. And next slide, I'll turn over to Nashawana. Good afternoon, my name is Dr. Naishwana Francis Thompson, Executive Director. Um, so for our online platforms, um, we are using Google Classroom and Google Classroom is a web-based platform uh, for teachers to distribute assignments and for students to submit assignments or teachers can send messages um, to families through the Google Classroom platform. Um, this platform is not where live instruction is being um, held. Um, it's almost similar to a Facebook app where you have someone posting um, different uh, assignments or different announcements. So if you're familiar with Facebook, um, Google Classroom is similar to that uh, platform. We're also using video conferencing tools and this is where um, live instruction will happen. So this school year, we're excited that we'll be utilizing Zoom and Google Meet. So Zoom is a virtual platform uh, where teachers will be providing Live instruction and Google Meet is also a live uh, platform uh, where teachers will be providing instruction. And again, that instruction could be whole group, small group, or individualized. And each school will identify um, which video conferencing tool they'll be utilizing. 
Um, and then we also have other great communication apps um, such as class, such as class dojo, that many families may be familiar with, um, where teachers are able to communicate uh, with families through that app. Um, so these are the different online platforms that we'll be utilizing uh, for the 2021 school year. Next slide. So most important, you know, we want everyone to know that we are your partners, and you're not in this. Um, alone. You know, our vision is for all students to be engaged in learning environments. We want to make sure we're strengthening their knowledge, their skills, their intellect, so that they can be successful in college, work, and life. Um, the Office of Academic Supports have worked tirelessly throughout the summer um, to really plan this instructional model to ensure that we're maximizing the instructional support for our students in a digital space or face-to-face. -face. Um, we have listened to feedback from many, many stakeholders, including parents, um, even teachers and school leaders, and even students around what would be the best um, way to educate students under these current circumstances. Um, so we've heard all of the feedback and we're really excited for this model that we've put forward uh, for the children of the School District of Philadelphia. Next slide. So many parents have reached out during the spring and now we, we want to be able to emphasize how do you get your concerns addressed? Um, just as in the normal school year, um, when you're face to face, you always want to start with your child's teacher. Um, if your child's teacher is not able to provide you the support um, that's required, there's also additional assistance that could be requested through your child's principal. Um, and then we also have family engagement liaisons that are at the school that can also provide um, additional support to families. But we want to make sure that your concerns are being addressed and we want you to start with your teachers to try to resolve any of those concerns, but there are definitely additional supports along the way um, for families that have concerns. Next slide. Um, for need more help, you can go to the FACE uh, website on the School District of Philadelphia's homepage. You can click on um, FACE or you can call 215-400-4120 um, for general academic support. Comments. So now we can open it up for questions and comments if we have any from our guests. Unmute. If you have any questions or comments, you can type it in the chat and then I'll read them aloud to our team. So I'm going to ask some questions, Janelle, if you don't mind, just, I don't think any, just so that um, I'm thinking as, as a parent. Team, I have, I have reached out to my teacher um, and my school, and I'm pretty much concerned about whether or not my child is performing at the rate that they should perform. And I think that they have, I think that they have an IEP. What do I do? In that circumstance, you should reach out to the Office of Specialized Services directly. And on our website, we do have a contact information page, but I can give you the phone number. It is 215-400-4170. And one of our secretaries will take your information so that you'll receive a call back from either one of the executive directors or the special education director to follow up with you and also make sure we have the relevant information and documentation to serve your child appropriately. What's on your website? Well, currently on our website, we have actually reorganized it. Can you say the title again? I'm sorry, can you say the title again? Yes, it's the Office of Specialized Services. So if you go to the philasd.org landing page and you go to the little magnifying glass and click it, it'll bring up a field and you can type in there Office of Specialized Services and it will take you to our site. And right now we have a contact information page. We are loading the list of the special education liaisons for each school onto that page this week. So families will know who to re reach out to for their particular school. And we also have landing pages that we're beginning to populate with very important information around our special education programs. So there's a landing page for autistic support, one for learning support, one for emotional support, 
so on and so forth. The other thing that's important, we have a parent resource page that is now up and rolling on the website. And it also links out to some of our state, um, our Pennsylvania Department of Education state compliance information and some helpful information for families about servicing our students during this digital age. Um, and if you do have additional questions, in addition to the phone number on the contact us page, there's also an email and the email address is checked throughout the day. And we are pretty much turning around email responses within 24 to 48 hours at this point. So you can email us at specialized services at phillasd.org. Some things that are coming in the future for our families, we actually are building out an emotional support resource website for families where there'll be family um, facing resources for students that struggle with emotional difficulties. We're also going to be putting up additional information around the digital and hybrid learning plans and more contact information, especially with regards to our special ed directors. We're flushing out all of that content to load onto our website now. Thank you. Absolutely. And what if I'm a student that receives ESOL support and I'm an English learner and I'm having difficulty understanding my lessons and I'm a parent so if my child is having difficulty understanding the expectation and I am a parent. How do I support my, my child? That's a great question. Um, what we would ask the parent to do is to contact the teacher first. And if I they- I that, it's just difficult. Yeah, then yeah. you can immediately email multilingual at phillasd.org. And that is um, a, our email address that we monitor hourly. And we would get back to the parent either uh, through a phone call, of course, or even an email. Uh, if that doesn't work, they can call our number at 215-400-4240. And when they call, they should say the language that they speak, and then we would return their phone call via language line. Thank you. Um, and now and I to understand. Piggy, oh, to piggyback on that, if you also need an interpreter to speak with the school staff, you can um, fill out the request for interpretation um, on the FACE website, the phillasd.org slash FACE slash get help website that um, was referenced before. And we also have multilingual hotlines that are available in each parent's respective language in the major languages that we support. So if you need assistance in your respective language, you can contact um, the multilingual hotline as well from that um, Get Help page. Thank you, Janelle. Now, and I remember in the spring, we stated that grading would only improve a student's um, end of year grade. Now I hear that we have grades and students will be assessed and assignments are important and attendance will be taken. How do I know whether or not my child is on track for um, meeting grade level expectations? Where can I find that information, Latanya? As she calls. <laughs> I apologize. So um, each student has um, an account really uh, connected to our um, student in, uh, information system and parents have that as well. So you're able to go onto that account using your uh, child's uh, student ID number and you can locate um, information including report card grades, um, test uh, scores, attendance, and things of that nature. Thank you. And, and where can they find the marking guidelines so that they understand what the expectations are for the different content areas? The marking guidelines can be found on the Office of Curriculum and Instructions webpage. So if you recall, Siobhan Savage um, walked you through going onto the School District, of, School District of Philadelphia's website. If you go there and click on the magnifying glass and then type in curriculum and instruction, it will take you to their webpage and there you can find the marking guidelines. Okay. 
And also as a parent, you have the opportunity so you don't have to use your student's account to sign up for a parent portal account for yourself. So you can sign up for a parent portal account. It'll show you your child's grades, attendance, and all pertinent information that you need to know related to your, your um, child. I would also like to say um, on our Office of Academic Supports webpage, the things that we discussed today, like the instructional design, the um, sample schedules, the uh, frameworks for uh, special education, they can all be found there as well. So same thing, if you click on the magnifying glass and type in Office of Academic Supports, you will find more detailed information about the things that we mentioned today. Thank you, team. I don't have any more questions. And then also, if you have a parent portal account, you'll be able to receive all pertinent communication from the district. You'll be able to see what information they have on record for you. And so if it is not accurate, you're able to update that information with your school to ensure that you're receiving pertinent information from the district. Can anyone uh, explain the difference between Parent Portal and Class Dojo? I'd be glad to. The Parent Portal is actually the School District of Philadelphia's official account for our students' information. So it actually links to not just your students' academic and attendance records, but it gives you the opportunity to support and set up your own login information so that you can keep track of what your child is doing on a regular basis. Class Dojo, on the other hand, is a free application that a lot of schools have been using to create their own Facebook-like streams so that families can receive additional information from their school on a very specific school level basis. That Class Dojo account is not an official school district or Philadelphia account, though a lot of schools tend to use it you will actually be asked ooh, you will actually be asked to provide your email address or your telephone number in order to link into your school's class dojo account and your teacher may have a classroom set up within class dojo so that you can interact with your teacher via text or via that mechanism on a daily basis and class dojo also has an app but please note there's no mandate across the district that we use class dojo in every school so it is very inconsistent, and it also is a school-based choice around to whether or not to use that. It is not the actual school district's official communication mechanism. For official information, please make sure you're referring to the school district of Philadelphia's website. Again, it's philasd.org. Thank you, Siobhan. So Parent Portal is, uh, that's the district platform. Um, and while it's not mandated, it's highly encouraged that parents sign up in Parent Portal um, so that they can stay abreast of all the current information, correct? Thank you. Yes, all things through the district come through the Parent Portal account. For instance, um, something that will be coming up soon is um, school selection. So in order to do or participate in school selection where you have the ability to opt out of your current school assignment or your neighborhood school assignment for the upcoming school year, you can do that selection through parent portal through school selection process. Thank you. So if we don't have any other, if there's no more questions, we can uh, wrap this session up. Thank you to our team from the Office of Academics. That's uh, Dr. Malika Brooks, Latanya Miller, Pat Ryan, Siobhan Savage, and Dr. Nishwana Francis Thompson. Thank you all for being here today. Thanks for all the great information and the conversation at the end. We really appreciate your time. Um, again, this uh, session has been recorded uh, for later viewing on our website. Um, this, you can view it on uh, this and future uh, sessions at www.philasd.org forward slash face forward slash fact. Thank you all once again for being here. I am not Tempest Burgess, I am Philip Hammond, and I appreciate your time. Have a good day.
Hi, my name is Cindy. I'm here to learn how to do my section for Chinese workshop. Hi, Cindy. <laughs> Thank you. It's great. Hi, Cindy. You. You're the BCA, right? Yeah, yeah. Right now, I help her to do the Chinese section on this Thursday. I feel I need to learn more, so I'm here to watch the lesson. Great. I was on mute. Let us know how we can support you if you need more information, okay? Yeah. Thank you. All right. All right. Um, I saw something in the chat. Somebody just said thank you for all the information. That was it. Okay. I'm sorry. I went well. That